You have done a great thing. One of our own had strayed, but you have returned Juhani to the Order. For this, you deserve the highest praise. What? Uh-huh. Yes? I hear you managed to return Juhani to the Order. Congratulations. I regret not being able to tell you more, but some things you must see with your own eyes. Is there something I can help you with? I hope your time is well spent here on Dantooine. Have you found the Mandalorian Raiders yet? Thank you, young master. My daughter can now, I think, rest in peace. Here is the reward I promised you. No, please take it. This pitiful amount will never be enough for what you have done for me. Again, I thank you. I will be sure to tell the Council of your great deed. My droid is still missing. I can feel him like a hole in my aching heart. My droid? Destroyed? No. No, this cannot be happening. I can't bear to live without him. Yes? Yes, what's on your mind? I thought I said I don't want to talk about it anymore. Not particularly. I, I guess it wouldn't hurt exactly either, though I, I, I don't know why you're so interested. When I think of all the men who betrayed us, the one that stands out above all of them is the one that I respect the most. Saul. You don't. I thought everyone did. The Admiral Saul Carath is the commander of the entire Sith fleet. He's half the reason Malak has done so well in the war. Saul was my commanding officer back when the Mandalorian Wars first began. He taught me everything about being a soldier, and I looked up to him. Saul approached me before he left. He talked to me about how the Republic was on the losing side and about how I should start thinking of my survival. I know now that he was trying to recruit me into the Sith, but I couldn't have conceived of it back then. I, I argued with him and he got angry and he left. I never saw him again. Saul was my mentor. He led us to so many victories against the Mandalorians. Even when things looked to be at their worst, I just, I couldn't conceive of it. He, he couldn't be serious. I was wrong, of course. He not only left us for the Sith, he, he gave them the codes to bypass our scanners. I remember waking up as the first of the Sith bombers snuck past our defenses and began destroying half of our dock ships. I knew right away what had happened. I mean, I could have stopped him. I, I could have stopped it all. I blame Saul, not myself. I was, I was stupid and I ignored the danger. He nearly destroyed us all. No, I fought Saul for years now, and if I ever catch up to him, he will regret what he's done. He will regret it. 
No, no, it's not. But I don't want to talk about it right now. Let's go. Hey there. What can I do for you? I'm sorry for the way I act. It's just that when it comes to Lena, I tend to get a little worked up. My brother and me had a good thing going. Sure, Griff had his run-ins with the law on terrace, but we got by okay until Lena came and ruined everything. She was a dancer at the cantina where my brother used to go play Kazakh. Griff could be a real smooth talker, and it wasn't long before the two of them were dating. But Lena was used to dating rich Theresian nobles, guys with mountains of credits. Griff could never give her the lifestyle she was used to, no matter how hard he worked. I thought Lena would brush Griff off when she saw how poor he was, but for some reason, she stuck around. I guess she saw the potential for a big payday down the road. I saw Lena for what she really was, a busty, credit-grubbing cantina rat. She used Griff and took away the only family I had. After they'd been together for a few months, Griff told me he was leaving Terrace. He and Lena were going to try and make their fortune off-world. He promised as soon as he made enough credits, he'd come back and get me. And we'd all live like royalty. That was two years ago. I haven't seen him since. I don't even know where he went. Oh, I know what happened. As soon as she got him off Taurus, Lena sunk her claws into Griff but good. She twisted him around her little finger and made him forget all about me. I know I'll probably never see Griff again. And part of the reason I came with you was the hope that I could find out what happened to my brother. Don't worry. I won't let the search for Griff get in the way of what we're doing. Let's just get back to the task at hand. Is there anything else I can help you with? Okay. Have it your way. I must give you my thanks. Because of you, I am once again welcome within the Jedi Order. I have spoken to the Council, and they have helped me see the truth. The truth about myself, and the truth of my actions. Quatra's injuries were not so severe as I first believed. I was foolish to believe I could harm a master such as she with my, my clumsy efforts. The fierce confrontation between us was nothing more than part of my training. Quatra wanted me to understand the threat of the dark side, to see how easy it was to fall from the path of light. After our last battle, Quatra had nothing left to teach me. I needed time alone to explore the turmoil of my own spirit. Only then was I ready to follow a guide. You, back to the light when I left. Quatra knew her work with me was done. There are other disciples who need training throughout the galaxy, and she could not stay to see if I passed this most difficult trial. With your help, I have passed this difficult trial. The Council now feels I am ready to continue with my training, though they have asked me to wait here for the time being. Hey, I'm glad to see you're not getting hung up on all this. The past is in the past, you know? First the Jedi trick you into becoming an enemy, then they welcome you back as a friend. I I can't say I approve of their training methods. I do not know what the Council has in store for me, but I will trust in the Force and the way of the Jedi to help me through whatever is to come. the loss of my droid much too hard. I feel I must apologize. But I must. I was much too attached to my droid. 
It was all that was left of my husband, you see. Maybe I thought that through the droid, my husband could live again, be with me still. But I went too far. I could not see what was missing in living a normal life. Fortunately, in my grief, I returned here and ran into Samt, an absolutely fascinating man. Samt and I got to talking, and, well, we have a lot in common. I think we'll be seeing more of each other. It's funny how things work out in the end. Maybe there is such a thing as fate, after all. But I think we should be going now. We have so much more to talk about. I just wanted to thank you for what you've done for me, and what you tried to do. Goodbye, and thank you. Why are you bothering me? I'm here to speak with the Council, not some servant. Please leave, or I shall be forced to tell the Council of your rude behavior. to see Johnny has returned to the way of the light. You are to be commended for your role in this. Your actions give us great hope for the future. Go to Master Shar and inform him that Johanny has returned to us. I think you may be nearing the end of your apprenticeship. I must congratulate you on your actions. You have saved Johanny and brought her back into the Order, and have given us all great hope for your future success. May the Force be with you as you continue your training. Greetings, young apprentice. Have you come seeking knowledge of the past? Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Or so they say. As chronicler of the Academy here on Dantooine, I find your quest for knowledge admirable. But I do not want to overwhelm you with the long history of the Jedi Order. You should ponder the history of Revan. It contains many lessons you may need if we hope to defeat Malak and the Sith. This facility is a training academy. The archives here are restricted to those who have attained the rank of Master. We must protect over-eager Padawans from being exposed to dangerous knowledge. The pursuit of knowledge is a noble goal but there are some things that require the wisdom of a master to truly understand. You should ponder the history of Revan. It contains many lessons you may need if we hope to defeat Malak and the Sith. May the Force be with you. You have done well, my pupil. The ancient grove has been purified and Juhani's journey down the dark path has been halted. Because of you, she walks once more in the light. But though she was saved, do not dismiss what happened to her. Juhani is both dedicated and true to the ideals of the Order, yet she was still vulnerable to the dark side, as are we all. She struck her master in anger during her training and injured her greatly. But it was Quatra's choice to test Juhani this way and it seems to have made its point. Juhani has been redeemed, and you have passed your final test. Congratulations, Apprentice. Or should I say, congratulations, Padawan. You have proven yourself worthy of joining the Jedi. Let me be the first to welcome you as a full-fledged member of our Order.
is now complete, Padawan. And perhaps now, it is time we dealt with the matter of the dream you and Bastila shared. When we heard of the ruins in your dreams, Master Dorok recognized it as one of a series of ancient structures here on Tantooine. This one in particular lies to the east of this enclave. We sent a Jedi to investigate, but he has not returned. Perhaps sending him in the first place was a mistake. The Force is guiding you through your visions. It may be that exploring the ruins is a task tied to your destiny. That is why the Council has now decided you should be the one to investigate this. The secrets to stopping Malak may be hidden within those ruins. You must investigate them and find what Revan and Malak were looking for. We do not know. That is one of the things you must investigate. We fear the worst. Is there anything else you want to know? Bastila will be a great Jedi someday. Even among the Masters and the Council, it is rare to find one so skilled in the art of battle meditation. Bastila was there when Revan was slain. Did you know that? Bastila herself does not like to talk about it. She was accompanying the strike team that confronted Revan when the Dark Lord was destroyed. Her role in the death of such a promising young Jedi as Revan upset her greatly. But Bastila knew she had to set her personal feelings aside for the sake of the galaxy and the Republic. The Force is strong with her now. And without her skill in battle meditation, we would have lost this war long ago. The way ahead will be difficult for young Bastila, and for you. But you must draw strength from each other. May the Force be with you. I demand justice! The Central Family is a blight upon Dantooine! must be punished. The Council will look into this matter, Mr. Metale. You must be patient. Your accusations have no proof, and we do not want you stirring up trouble with the Sandrals if there is some mistake. Mistake? My son Shen is missing. How can there be any doubt the Sandrals are to blame? There are other possible explanations for your son's disappearance. Ah, you Jedi are good for nothing but talk. I shall only wait so long before I take action on my own. As dangerous as the threat from Darth Malak and the Sith may be, we Jedi cannot simply abandon our other responsibilities. The Council has promised Alan Matali we will look into his son's disappearance. Should you have time, Padawan, you may want to investigate this matter. Your study and training are important, of course. But the Jedi are not a cloistered order. Our influence and teachings must spread beyond the walls of our academies. It is in our real world that we truly prove ourselves worthy of the title Jedi. You would do well to remember this young Padawan. The task has its own importance. It may also serve to divert our minds for a short time. Something which carries its own rewards. <laughs> It was less of a dream and more of a vision, a vision the two of us shared. But I am certainly willing to answer any questions the Jedi Council did not. Are you wondering why we shared the vision, or why we even received it in the first place? To the first, I can only repeat the answer that the Council gave us. Our fates are linked, and for two as strong as we are in the Force, that amounts to a near physical bond. As to the second, I truly don't have an answer for you. The Force works as it will. 
and perhaps we should be grateful for what we've been given. I, I don't know. Believe me, I certainly don't find the prospect of being joined to you enjoyable in any fashion. Please, forgive me. I did not mean to imply that you were repulsive in any sense of the word. That we shared something so personal is just not something I'm used to. What would you like to know? Perhaps because we desired to. Perhaps because they came to this planet and were strong enough in the Force to leave a, a trace. They did something important here. Of that, I am certain. It may be simply that we are sensitive to that event, or it may not. We dreamed about Revan and Malak either because we were meant to or because we needed to. There is no other way to look at it. I have no idea. It was obviously important, however. That is why we must investigate this further. With luck, we will. I would rather not rely on such visions to guide us. But when we have so little else to go on, and the galaxy hangs in the balance... As you wish. We really should return our thoughts to business anyway. I'm here. Sure. I'm here. Sure. Thank you. 